So graphics cards are graphical processing units, also called as GPUs. And uh, GPUs have hundreds and thousands of cores that work parallelly to give or to create what you require. Graphics cards uh, work for games, for video rendering like uh, Premiere Pro and Valorant, CSGO and so on. There are uh, three types of graphics cards, CUDA, uh, Tensor and Ray Tracing. Okay, so CUDA Core. CUDA Core stands for Compute Unified Device Architecture. A graphics card has hundreds and thousands of these CUDA cores which work together parallelly and they give the output to de desire. In CPUs, you normally have 8 to 24 cores, but in GPUs, you have hundreds and thousands of CUDA cores. So when it comes to gaming, when your game is loading, you know that your CUDA cores are working to provide the graphics that you, that you need. They give you better lighting, more 3D realistic graphics and even more detailing. Okay, tensor cores. Tensor cores are basically uh, data, but they are multidimensional data. So they, uh, they work on the principle of multiply add computation. So if you have two FP16 cores that are low precision, they will be converted to, two, uh, to one FP32 core. So uh, all these together will work and they will give you a much more efficient and much more faster uh, uh, output than compared to CUDA cores. A lot of, the, a lot of uh, tensor cores work together for ray tracing as ray tracing also requires a uh, high level of matrix or multi multiplications. It's really interesting to hear a lot about information from Rishi. He told a lot about the components of the GPU that is CUDA cores and the tensor cores. But I think it is equally important to speak about the ray tracing cores. Ray tracing is a technology of tracing lights of an object that is present to a screen. So, uh, as far as the need for the basic math is needed to trace the virtual life of a photorealistic object. It is fired from an eyes, but it is not as we see in a real life. But still, it, uh, within simulation, the results are almost the same. In the state, the size of the chip is increasing. This is because the size of the, uh, the small chips will have uh, the higher, faster processing and it also consumes less power and hence it emits less heat. So, overclocking is a commonly used term in the gaming community. Overclocking allows you to use the processor in, in a more faster way than it is actually intended. So, since it is, it, it also does many resource intensive work very fastly and very smoothly. So, it makes the device very snappier. So, overclocking has also an additional benefits like it is widely used in video editings and it also boosts the frame rates. That which is very important in a multi multiplayer games. So uh, having an extra FPS, that is the frame rates per second. So it is very uh, uh, it is an additional benefit against an opponent. So overclocking can be achieved by the use of MSI uh, afterburner and where we tune the settings. But this also has a certain side effect. So these alterations can void any product guarantees. It also reduces the security and the stability of the product and it also reduces the overall performance of the product and the life of the processor and the other uh, components associated with it. Video Informator. For more content, follow Tech Researchers Club on our various social media platforms. Thank you.